Hello and welcome back to 5 Minute Materials, the show where we demystify every node in the Unreal Engine Material Graph. Today, we're having a look at the Object Pivot Point node. Now, if you have used this node before, I can absolutely guarantee you that in this video, you're going to learn something new about it. So, let's get started with it. What is this node? Um, well, you can see that it's actually a material function. And basically all it does is it gets the zero point of local space and converts that into world space. So if we were to have a look at my little diagram that I drew earlier here, we have our object pivot point, which is right here. Um, you know, it's local space up here might be a hundred or a hundred over here. Sorry, that was my peacock. But in world space, so this is our world origin over here then these values are completely different. So basically we're just saying, let's get the object's pivot point or its origin point. What is that in world space? How can this actually be used? Well, one way that I've been using it recently, which has been super, super handy for me and my endeavors is actually using this node to propagate the color of a texture at the pivot point throughout the entire mesh. So for example, you can see I've got a world aligned texture here. You know, this circle uh, is inheriting the entire texture, you know, based on its absolute world position. Um, but if we instead plugged in the object pivot point, fuck, I did the wrong one. But if we instead plugged in the object pivot point, then you can see that this circle here, it's a solid color, um, this, this three dimensional circle, you can see it's a solid color, and as I move it along, it actually changes color based on what part of the texture it's on top of. If I move to this blue bit over here, the circle will become blue. It's basically kind of reading from the, the pixel at the location, um, you know, wherever its pivot point is. And obviously I'm only doing this in R and G, or the X, Y axis, so moving it up and down isn't going to do anything. So this could be kind of handy if you were doing like some runtime virtual texture stuff and you know you were using that to propagate up to you know let's say a bush or something. So obviously my grass inherits from the runtime virtual texture for its color but let's say we wanted this bush here to be the same color as the ground underneath but we didn't want that color to change across the leaves. So you know we could make it green throughout the entire bush not brown you know towards the path and i also use this in my foliage bending system so if we actually go to uh this bit up here and we go to the pivot point and we get this aha uh -huh, and we put it into the base color um we also have to vertex interpolate this uh, and this is something that i'll be covering in just a second and now we have a look at this. You can see that when I run into this foliage, I've got black being it's not bending out of the way and white being that it's fully affected. But you can see that it's actually happening per uh, object. It's not like per region of the object. It's the entire object all at once is lighting up and, you know, bending out of the way. And so the alternative of that is this here and you can see that the leaves get all really stretched when I kind of uh, run through them and they're all squishy and bendy and you know it's not really the effect we want and you can see these kind of smooth gradients on each object as I walk through them um, which isn't ideal for interacting with them it is ideal for some bits like you know these these bushes here we want to be able to push them out of the way per leaf but for taller foliage I want them to all bend you know, uniformly. So that's one use case that I'm personally using this node for. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is actually using the pivot point as a mask, like kind of like a bounding box UV mask, but for individual instances. So let's say we have a, an object. Uh, this is a bush, but obviously without the, the alpha and stuff. And let's say we want to make a mask from bottom to top in, in this material. So what we could do in most cases is get the bounding box based UV node. Uh, and if we just plug the B in, B is the Z axis. If we just plug that in here, you can see that we get a gradient from zero 
at the bottom to one at the top of the bounding box. Um, and now this is a static mesh, you know, I can do this and it's pretty, pretty good. We could use this to, I don't know, multiply by a hundred and make float three and put that in the x-axis and then use world position offset. Um, and that will, you know, kind of bend them this way. But this can get very iffy very quickly if we were to actually place these with... What the fuck? If we were to actually place these with the foliage tool, uh, because the foliage tool is creating instances of a mesh. So if I placed this foliage here, um, you can see, you know, it looks basically fine. It's doing exactly what we told it to before. Uh, you know, with that gradient. But then if I was to place one up here, you can see that this one's changed. And if I do it down here, this one's changed. And you can see that their, you know, their wheel position offset is changing and that kind of thing. If I put one all the way up here, again, it's going to change. And that is because the bounding box actually encompasses all of the objects within the instance. So the bounding box in this case is like, you know, this big. Um, so you can see that here, we've got black all the way down here, and then the one that's at the highest point is white. So this just simply will not do. If instead we created our mask using the pivot point and world position, and we mask both of these in B, B being the Z axis, and then we will subtract one from the other. Now I might just have to brute force this because I can't remember which gets subtracted from which. So this is basically going to say this point here on this mesh is this many units in the z-axis away from the pivot point and then what we can do is divide this by a number uh, which we're going to call foliage max height divide by that and put that into the base color so evidently i've screwed this up and it should actually be this way <laughs> and there we go cool so we now have our black at the bottom white at the top based on, you know, this max height that we've set up. So it is something that you kind of have to, I guess, balance manually. You know, you have to say, okay, well, this foliage is 100 units high. But if we actually go and look over here, you will see we're still running into that same issue with the uh, bounty box. Uh, now, what we actually have to do if we want this to work for individual foliage instances is get the pivot point at the vertex stage. So we want to get our vertex interpolator. And if we just plug that into there, you will see, if I fucking set this correctly, that we have our pivot point gradient actually working once again. And so, you know, we could balance that to there or whatever. And now per instance of this foliage, we have a gradient, which, you know, maybe we have some tree sway and we only want them to sway, uh, you know, more at the top than at the bottom, but we're using foliage, so we can't use bounding box UVs. This is what we'd be doing instead. Um, if we do want to do something in the world position offset, you don't want to use the vertex interpolator node. We might actually just put that over here and bang that into there. So we still get the color representation, but now we're using the wheel position offset, blah, 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 blah. So uh, if I just put a parameter in here, cool. And now I can make each of these little bushes, you know, do their own thing based on their own pivot point location. Um, so this can be super, super powerful. I've been using this for my wind system, uh, like for all of my trees. So if I put the wind intensity up, you know, you can see all the trees, you know, blow over in the wind. They're all getting pushed by the wind and stuff. Um, that's using object pivot point and a maximum height and that kind of thing. If you want to learn how all of this wind stuff was done, uh, you can check out my wind tutorial video here. Um, and when you get to the point in that video where we use the bounding box UV as a mask, you can instead use the knowledge that you have gained in this video and have a setup like this uh, instead. And another thing to keep in mind with the pivot point is if you are using it to do world position offset stuff, um, you don't need to use the vertex interpolator. It will just obviously do it at the vertex stage and it will do it at the pivot point of each instance. So it's only when you're doing 
you know, pixel stage stuff, like base color, metallic, specular, roughness, emissive, normal, all that kind of stuff. That's the only time that you'll need to use the vertex interpolator when using the pivot point with instanced foliage or instance meshes and stuff. I reckon that's where we will leave it for now. And if you did find this video educational or entertaining, just make sure that you hit the like button and subscribe for upcoming videos. If you do want to go one step further in helping out this channel, you can do so for as little as $1 per month in our Patreon, which is always linked below. If you do have any more questions or you need help with anything Unreal Engine related, make sure you join our very friendly and helpful Discord, which is also linked in the schmeebly doobly. So I guess with that, I say goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, at long last, I'm free. Give me the stone, Potter. <laughs>